Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually. So, did you have a fabulous weekend? Well, I guess it depends what part of the country you're in, but I was in Southwest Michigan. The weather was gorgeous, a lot of boating, a lot of walking. I would say kind of borderline hiking, but you know me, it's more like a walk walk. <laughs> but it was a great weekend. Not a lot of sewing, but my table is full for the week. So, Welcome. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. Today we have Joanne Banco, and she's going to be talking about some really, really, really cute baby items. And also she's going to be showing off her design of the month and a cool tote bag. So I can see you all rolling in. Uh, the schedule for the week is pretty much, you know, we were a little bit later today because we were, I was rolling back. <laughs> Joanne was too from the long weekend. Uh, so this afternoon, you have Cindy Hogan at 4.30 uh, for her software shut-in over on her page. Tomorrow, 1.30 on my page for some giveaways. And I finally finished the trench coat. Yay! So I cannot wait to see yours. And then uh, Emily is gone for the week. So And then we have, again, Thursday at noon. So that's your schedule for the week. I see you all. Hello, hello. Let's not make Joanne wait. I see her in the background. Hi, Joanne. Hey, Angela. Hi, everybody. Great to see, to see you. Oh, Good to see you. I, I know you're in Ohio and I'm in Michigan. So my weather you get about a day later. But did you have beautiful weather this weekend? Because gorgeous. it was amazing where I was. Absolutely gorgeous. I was outside and loving all the sunshine. And it was great. It was wonderful. Awesome. How about awesome. you? Well, I, I, yeah, same thing. A little bit of boating. A little bit. I was joking that I did a little bit of hiking. Uh, but it's more like walking. <laughs> So, Joanne, I cannot wait for today. I have some of your things up. And, of course, it's the beginning of the month. So the free design of the month that everybody always waits for. Can hardly yeah. wait to see all of this. We're finally, finally back. Hi, everybody. Hi, Cheryl. Ooh, hi, Lorraine. I got some Ohioans here. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and everybody else. Very good. Very good. Um, uh, free design has been actually off the table for... April, May, June. So three months we were we were on a little on a little on a little break. It was kind of nice though, you know. I don't know everybody else here how you feel, but um, as much as I love to sew, and I know you do too, Angela, and we do what we do almost every day. Sometimes when you have that just that little bit of like the deadline taken off, <laughs> you get a little bit of time to just start like creating in your mind. And I ended up with like a notebook full of ideas. And in fact, I've got ideas all scheduled for the blog um, all the way through October now. So I think that's it awesome. Yeah. You're think, so right. And we could have a whole entire day talking about that. Just taking a break, doing something different, and you come back. I, I am so invigorated. My new thing is hats. I've been embroidering hats. And I'm trying mm. to get the whole fishing team before our big tournament next week, all with cool hats. I'll let you know how that works out. Oh, <laughs> right now, it's on mine. <laughs> I can't wait to see that for sure. Absolutely. Yes. But yeah, I see somebody wrote in about my newsletter. I've been doing Arnell. I've been doing the newsletter faithfully, faithfully, faithfully every weekend, and still trying to provide some some um, some sewing goodies for you to download or read about or or think about um, every week. So we never we never awesome. stop. <laughs> the sewing <laughs> never stops. It continues on. It does. Oh, yes, Louise. I saw that. Um, Melody, if you're on here, I saw Key West got a little wet. So you are you didn't have as good of weather. So, all right. So let's talk about this tote bag. I have this on here and it is so cute. I can hardly wait to show everyone. Okay. And is this part of your free design of the month? It is actually. Yes, it is. You know, it's, um, I will admit that sometimes it's a challenge to come up with, you know, what I usually do. Um, might be backwards, but I usually find the free design first, get the free design first, and then try to think of what in the world could I do with this. <laughs> and um, we might joke about this, but you know, when all else fails, make a tote or a pillow, right? <laughs> because <laughs> that is true, though. <laughs> like it'll work for everything. Um, but but actually, when I um, and I knew that um, we needed to use that uh, buttonhole design, obviously we could think of all kinds of great things to use that for. I thought, well. You know, it might be fun to do a tote and make a flap and have that flap actually actually button. And I'll show you the real actual tote in a minute on, on camera, but we can go through through the pictures just a little bit. So that is really a cute bag, by the way, Joanne. Well, you know, I it's totes. I could talk for an hour just about totes. In fact, it's uh, funny when I did this one, I started thinking about how 
how useful they are, not only to ourselves. I, I like to laugh, you know, that there's, you can never have too many totes. I, how many, I, it would be fun to see, you know how you go to a sewing event and they say, how many of you have one sewing machine? How many have three? How many have, you know, and everybody see who's standing when you get to about 10. Well, if you ask me how many tote bags I have in the car right now, let alone in various places in the house, I might win the prize. <laughs> But I don't know, I, Joanne. I'd have to. You and I might have to have a competition. I am like the tote bag. I, I mean, if there's a tote bag, I have it. And if there's one that I can purchase, I have it. If I can sew it, I'll make it. I have a tote bag for everything. <laughs> well, there's so much fun to make. I think one of the things I love about it is that you could try different techniques, and you know, try different designs. In fact, here's. I, I just wanted to tell you this little thing I got going on next week. I'm. I teach a local group here in in Northeast Ohio. Um, like a club meeting every month. And next week we're having our club meeting and I have designated it um, the day for terrific totes. And I'm going to do a whole tote show and tell, and I'm going to be demonstrating different techniques and then show how to make a, just a really simple one. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a tote, um, a totorama <laughs> in September. We're going to make totes and we're going to donate them to some um, needy places like a woman's shelter um, we're, we're trying to, you know, scout out the places now, but that's kind of what I was thinking about. You know, when we think about totes, we love them. I love making them. We love using them, but they make a perfect, you know, gift item or just a, like a, you know, a dose of happiness present for people that maybe wouldn't normally have something special like that. And like I said, it's a great way to try out different techniques. It's also perfect. If there's any, raise your hand if you're out there and you, uh, test your embroidery designs on sample fabric maybe, and then you stick it in a drawer, right? <laughs> Cause you're gonna do the real thing on the real thing, but that piece goes in the drawer or whatever. Well, that would be the perfect thing to make just like a front of a tote bag with or a large pocket on a tote bag or anything like that. So mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this idea and it's gonna be fun to see what- oh. uh, <laughs> Pete says that we lose. Pete, <laughs> so, Pete, does that mean that you have more tote bags or your lovely life, wife, Glenda? Because I don't know. You could be a tie there. <laughs> oh, my. That's funny. I think Glenda might beat us on the tote bags. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really funny. We could have a tote, tote, a tote, totorama show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds fun. So I'm going to so, bring this back up because okay, this... No. Is really so. This is the buttonhole that is for right. free, correct? Just yep, that's the free design of the month. And we did have a glitch on that over the weekend. So if anybody missed it, you can go back now. It's there on the brother blog. It's also on ibroidery.com, so you can download it directly from either place. But you need to go to the blog for you know the brother blog in order to download the instructions anyway. And I've got all the measurements there for you. I think it's it's a really good tote bag size. So even if you don't want to make that exact same tote, you might want to use my measurements that I provided just as a, you know, a good all around general um, way to do it. And mm -hmm. it actually started with that, um, that fabric that you're showing right there. I had a, a chunk of it, <laughs> literally just like a little, little chunk of it left. And then I happen to have that tan fabric. And I, when I put the two together, I was like, well, oh, they look really good together. Why don't I make something where I pick up the colors in the print? That's really one of my favorite tips um, for choosing embroidery thread colors or decorative stitch thread colors. Pull out a fabric that you love or buy a fabric that you love and then work your color scheme around it. And I had another mm -hmm. little piece of the orange or, you know, a little bit of yardage enough to to do the lining with. And um, so I figured I'd use that on the, on the inside. So it's a great way to mix and match too, because nobody's going to look at your tote and say, Oh, why did she use that on the inside and that on the outside and that for the straps? If they coordinate, they're going to look at it and go, wow, this looks like a designer bag. You know, it all it, works. Exactly. You know, I'm looking at those colors because it's so striking, by the way, it's a fabulous bag, but you know, I don't know, just like if I saw these fabrics and I didn't know what the texture was or anything like that, I see a beautiful blouse out of the print. I see a beautiful skirt out of the tan and I see an awesome jacket out of the other. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> just the you're... textures and the colors. I mean, just gorgeous. Great job, Joanne. Well, you know what? I learned that a long time ago when, um, you know, I mean, there was a time when, when I sewed very, you know, kind of different things, but I don't think, I think our fabrics that are available today are so wonderful. And as more fabric 
became available, I really learned to just buy fabric that I loved because mm-hmm. I knew I would make something beautiful with it. So I get inspired by fabrics and fabric prints and color combinations. And then it just like, it grows from there. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's gorgeous. And the bag is adorable. All right. So, so there's your straps. Yep. Let me stop on the straps for just a second. Just sure. a second, because you know me, I like to build in techniques. Everybody here that knows me knows this. If you don't know it already, I'll tell you right now. I love to just build in little little tips and tricks. Some things maybe I've just, you know, kind of made up as I went along, but other things um, friends have taught me. And we all learn a lot from friends, right? I've learned a ton from you and and I and I love to think I about when I'm <laughs> when I'm working on something, oh, this was I remember when Angela did that. I remember, you know, different things and and repeat those. But somebody taught me that technique of folding the straps and I, I like to put a little bit of fusible uh, batting in there too. But when you fold it, you are able then following those instructions to stitch right down the center of that strap and then close to each edge and it anchors everything. So you don't have to do the turn the right side outy thing, <laughs> you know, where you sew something skinny and then you have to go through and right. struggle to get that strap. So it's all done in one step and, the, and they're padded just a little bit. Now, if you wanted to, you could use stiff interfacing instead, if you mm-hmm. like to have a stiffer, you know, crisper handle, but I like something a little bit soft cause I'm gonna carry it up on my shoulder. So, you know, and you might, go Joanne, ahead. That is one of the best tips for somebody who's never made bags. I just wanna point this out because I recently was working on a project where I had, I, the straps were kind of small and you and I have our tricks for that. But for somebody who's never sewn before, this is the easiest method ever for making a strap. Easiest. I mean, this could be for a belt. It could be for a strap. It could be for like when we were doing the straps on the Chloe, it could be anything like that. And it's so much easier than turning it around, no matter how cool of a turning tool you have. (laughs) It's, It's one of those things that I say, it just works. It works, you know, and when it works, repeat it over and over and over again. (laughs) Yes. That's what I like to do. Absolutely. Another little tip that you might want to do, and I didn't, don't think I have this in the instructions, but um, you know, we all have different, like I'm, I'm not really very long from the shoulder to the waist. Some people are a little longer there. Some people are a little shorter. You might want to put a, a measuring tape across your shoulder and see where you want that, that top of that bag to hit before you cut the length of those straps. And then you can customize that a little bit. I just used an average length, but there's another little tip for you. Just, you know, think about it so you can um, have that fit you if you're trying to make it fit your, your particular body and pointing to where my waist is. I know you can't see all the way down there. <laughs> hey, uh, Debbie wants to know, uh, like when you buy fabric, do you have a specific amount that you buy? Oh, that's, you a, a, that's a great question. I'd like to hear your answer to that too. But I would say if it's something like that, I like a that would be a blouse weight and a skirt weight and maybe a dress. I usually buy four yards because that way you can do whatever you can make two piece with it, or you can make, you know, Mm -hmm. one piece and have, and have plenty um, to work with. If it's something that I'm going to use for, for a bottom, if it's a wide fabric, I usually buy like a yard and a half usually because then I can do a skirt or I can do pants with it. Obviously if you're taller, you might want a little bit, a little bit more than that. Um, and kind of, if I'm doing, buying something just for a top, I usually, I usually buy, I used to buy a yard and a half until I got your ruched tea pattern. And I think that calls for two yards. <laughs> so now every time I go, I might want to make a ruched tea out of that. <laughs> so I buy two yards instead of one and a half. <laughs> you know, it's so funny you say that in the past, I used to always buy almost the same, a yard and a quarter or a yard and a half, but then I would get the fabric and I would think, oh, I wanted to make a longer top or I, I didn't want something else. So I found it to be much safer, three to five yards, somewhere in that range. Uh, and again, yeah. if it's pants or something, it's usually two, unless I think that I might be able to squeeze a skirt out of there too. But three to five is a pretty good average because it'll give you enough that you can make something fabulous. You, you have enough that maybe you can make a couple of things. And then if you don't want it, you can give it to a friend. Yeah, you know what? I, it's, I say it's kind of like cooking for company. You always want to have leftovers rather than <laughs> you know, the bowls are empty and they might still look a little hungry. So (laughs) yeah, there you go. That's perfect. All right. Let me bring this back up here. Yeah. We're we're seeing some fun, some fun comments. So people like to use in their, in their projects and different methods. Yes. The tan fabric is a canvas type fabric. It's a home deck um, 
fabric, but it's like the lighter side of home deck, not the not the heavier side. Um, I love uh, standard kind of canvas fabric. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's it it embroiders and decorative stitches. You know, end up really nice on there. I try to avoid anything. Just another tip for you when you're buying the plain fabrics. Try to avoid anything with um, what's called a twill weave. And you know what a twill weave is, Angela, but I'll explain it. It's it's a diagonal, very slight, almost ribs in the fabric. And maybe very, very slight, and maybe you won't even feel the texture, but when you have that diagonal and you try to do stitching on it, as opposed to an even weave where everything is just, you know, the, the threads are laced together and just form, a, you know, crosswise and lengthwise. Um, that uh, twill will uh, throw off your stitches just a little bit and it can make things look uh, cockeyed. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a customer once and she came in and she was, she said she was repeating a technique that I had showed her on different fabric and like she was doing it on twill. And she said, why does everything look like off kilter? And I said, it's the fabric weave. It's catching your, your, your needle. And, and even with a sharp needle, it's still going to deflect a little bit and go a little wonky. Did I did I describe the twill weave decently? That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I like the wonky the wonky stitch. <laughs> All right, let me scroll down here a little bit. A lot of people are saying they love this technique as well. And by the way, uh, if I didn't mention it, someone that rolled in late, yes, you can save the show. So if you're on Facebook, just real quick, we are live on Brother So's Facebook and crafting page, and on the Facebook and YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, you can just go there and binge watch. You can save the videos on Facebook. Just share it to your page. And then you can always go back and watch it unless yep. Facebook does something crazy and gets rid of videos. But <laughs> uh, so right now, I think you're safe. It's all right. All so. there. And Dandy Soap DIY, I'll answer your question about machines in just a little bit. Okay. We'll go on with the, with the bag for just a few minutes. So yes, Sheila, there's a full tutorial for the bag. What Angela is showing is coming from the Brother blog, Stitching Social. And when you go there, you will find all of the step-by-step -step instructions. And I think Brother So has already posted it. I did. I, I posted it yeah. right in the link. So you can always go back and I'll post it one more time at the end. It doesn't like you to post too many times the same thing. So here's the website too, by the way. Nope, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Hold on a second. That's uh, Emily's. Let me bring up. Sorry about that. Okay, which, <laughs> there we go. There's, there's, both both. Hands, there's mm -hmm. mine and then there's brothers. If you go to brothers, just scroll down to the bottom and you'll find both blog posts. So very easy to find. All right, back to your blog. And just a note, if you visit mine over the weekend, you'll find a, a blog post that I'm doing um, with more totes and links to tote projects that I've done for Brother in the past and all kinds of ideas for making more totes. So perfect. All right, so now we're doing the pocket. And uh, I like to interface the fabric. And that's, you know, like you would for it, any kind of buttonhole, you would want to use interfacing. And so I went ahead and on there, I interfaced that whole piece for the pocket flap. And then just the uh, pocket part got uh, uh, interfaced as well. And then I just um, made it so that it's uh, the opening at the bottom that I could fold under. So that's all top stitch then at the end and closes up all the openings. So your very, corners very look easy. so nice, Joanne. Do you have any tips for corners? Because we were oh. just talking about this last week and everybody yeah. does something a little different. I do actually. A long time ago, I saw a tip. I, I don't know what the origin was, but it's been around for a while. Where when you when you sew a corner, you, you know, you sew both of the side seams, and then you're going to do the next seam. The next seam that you do, you actually fold the fabric seam allowance in towards the fabric, and then stitch that that final line. So you're in effect you're stitching your seam allowance in a flattened, turned position, and then when you turn it right side out it forms a nice crisp corner and then use a good plastic pointing tool or a bamboo, you know, thing, whatever, something that's don't use your scissors. You'll be sorry. We're all, <laughs> we've all been sorry at least once when we grab those scissor points and, you know, try oh, to yeah. take that out. Yeah. And then or another thing I do, and, and you probably do the same thing with a lot of your um, garment things. I like to um, mist the fabric a little bit when I press it so that it's a little bit damp and then I use your clapper when I'm when I'm ironing it. So exactly. that extra that extra dampness just kind of helps mold the fibers a little bit while you're steaming it and then of course the clapper makes them all 
flatten out and stay really nice and flat. So hmm. that all I, I'm just laughing. Hey, Lynn, we're, we're so thrilled you're here, by the way. <laughs> and we don't care how many machines or what kind. We're just glad you're here hanging out with us. <laughs> yep. All these things will apply in many different, many different areas of uh, the project itself. The tote bag actually was done on the Brother NS 1750D. So that's a, a smaller machine. It's a combination sewing and embroidery machine. So you can you can do this project with with even the little littler machines. So the pocket then machine, obviously the it, it, oh I love that machine. I absolutely love it. That pocket flap has to be totally created before you do the buttonhole. Now. I'm gonna, again, I don't know if anybody's ever done this. You know, sometimes we just like go, what did I do? Why wasn't I thinking? I have actually used embroidered buttonholes before and done it on the single layer and then have the dull moment like, this isn't, I, I, this isn't gonna work. You gotta do it through <laughs> the whole layer, okay? So obviously I did this one the right way, so. <laughs> That oh, we've all had one of those moments. But now that you just mentioned it, probably most of the people watching will not have that moment on their tote bag. <laughs> exactly, it's got to be it's got to be just like it would on a on a uh, buttonhole that you're doing on a sewing machine. So and and because it was a small piece, even though that's a four by four hoop, that's where I used the uh, the brother sticky stabilizer adhesive back tear away. That works really really good for that. There's always a good good use for that. And that design is just so pretty. And actually, I changed the color. So there you go. You know, again, you see what I did. I took the fabric as my inspiration and picked up all the colors in the fabric for my buttonhole so that everything would then uh, coordinate. I almost that never is, use the same colors. That buttonhole is so cute. I love the outside edges, the little curves. I could see having a whole bunch of those in a line, maybe having something in between and then a buttonhole. I mean, you could really... Oh, a duvet cover. Yeah, yeah. That oh, would, that would be, be gorgeous, great. It? You know, it would be fun to see everybody else's ideas for, for where to use an embroidered buttonhole. One of my favorites, absolute top favorites, is to use it for the back closure on a pillow. And then I buy pretty buttons. And then that way, the front, if you're making, you know, the front of your pillow something decorative, the back of your pillow is just as pretty and you could flip it around and you've got a reversible. A reversible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Anne is asking, what are the best um, uh, frames? So the hoop for the persona for this, you'd want to use the four by four. This is all good in the four by four. Because you, when you have a small design, you always want to pick your smaller hoop. It, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, the persona has all those wonderful compact hoops. Yeah. But I, I think the buttonhole is a little bit bigger than any of those. But you never know until you try. Use the smallest hoop you can get away with. No matter what you're embroidering, that's my golden, one of my embroidery golden rules. Use the smallest hoop you can get away with because you'll always have a better um, hold on the fabric and you also will use less stabilizer. That's so. a bonus. All Good right. Question. I see you're marking here. This look turned out gorgeous. There you see it totally, totally done, ready to, ready to turn into the tote now. So you got to, you know, sometimes your steps have to be done in a certain order. I like to try to do things like as much of one thing as I possibly can at one time. And what I mean by that is if I've got the machine set up for sewing, I'll think, oh, what pieces can I can I sew at this point? So that when I go then to switch to embroidery, you know, I don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. All right. Yes, you can do your project on the SE400. Absolutely. So remember, this is a downloadable free design and it will fit any uh, of the four by four machines. Hey, there you go, Lynn. I knew you had a brother machine in there in that stack of machines. <laughs> oh, the 400 D that was such a little sweetheart machine. That was really a special machine. Of course, they're all special. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It let's would see be wonderful on a little girl's dress. That would be a great, great, great idea. And terrific idea. So now I'm getting ready to mark for the I call it decorative stitching, but it's it's quilting essentially because I've layered that fabric with fusible fleece. You could use just regular, you know, regular batting, but I like to use the fusible. Um, what I like about the fusible, and you've maybe heard me talk about this before, is that if you fuse it really good, you know, where you use like a little bit extra pressure and a little bit extra steam, it flattens it out a little bit more. So in most cases, that means it can stay inside the seam allowance and you don't have any problem. If you're 
if your batting that you're using or your, um, you know, your layer that you're using for the quilting is a little more fluffy, then you might want to cut it so that it's just inside the seam allowance so that you're not actually sewing the seam allowance with that batting in there. That's that a good tip, sense. Joanne. Really good tip. So I love to, I love to do the cross hatching method. It just, it makes it so easy. You know, you just make an X basically stitch your first line and then follow every, um, consistent line with either the edge of your presser foot, or in this case, I actually used the uh, quilting guide that you can get for either a walking foot or this project, I actually stitched it with the, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> dynamic dual feed foot. We talked about this a lot before. This foot allows you to use certain decorative stitches. It's not you can't use everyone and you got to test it a little bit and you'll see in my instructions I gave uh, you know the exact um, uh, pictures from the instructions excuse me <coughs> I got that allergy pinch in my throat Let me take oh, I've had that all weekend Joanne I feel for you and what it always happens well you're live that's just as bad it usually happens when I'm like at a grocery store and everybody's like why is she coughing because I've got allergies and I and I'm in an air-conditioned place <laughs> I know I know it's crazy they go on through for the whole summer. Hey, Joanne, do you remember uh, the SE25? What, uh, do you remember what size hoop? You're like so good at that. That's a four by four. Everything? That's a four the by SC four is my recollection. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I just saw it on here. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Kathy, or Kathy's got an SE425. Oh yeah, 425. That's what I meant. <clears throat> yeah, is no, that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say in all likelihood it's a four by four. Yeah. With some of the some of the um, machines that aren't in the dealer line, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I don't get to see those as as often. But um, if it came, you know, you should know from what what came in the box. Or always, you know, the easiest thing to do with all of this type of thing, and this is a great point she really brings up. You know, a lot of times you wonder like what what goes with my machine. You know, what works on my machine. Two things I would I would suggest. Number one, if you if you could find the manual, great, but we all know how that goes, right? You stick it somewhere, <laughs> whatever. Maybe the box got, box got stored in the attic. Brother has all of their manuals on their website. So mm -hmm. all you have to do is search for the manual, and then you can you can download a PDF copy just to view on your computer screen and in the fir or your tablet or whatever. In the first few pages of the manual, you'll see the listing for all the accessories that came with that machine. Standard, packed, should have been in the box when you opened it. And then you'll also see a list of optional. Now, it won't be every option that's available. For that, you want to look for the, um, the Brother uh, accessory catalog, which um, we've, we've talked about that before. I can post a link at the, at the end of the show so people can find that if they want to. Um, sometimes it comes in packed in with your machine. You might ask your dealer if they've got a copy. But the most current one of those will show every, every foot and every accessory, and then it will also give a letter code. So if your machine is in the A category, you can use all of the feet that are listed with that A, if it's in the B or whatever different categories they use. So hopefully that helps. And it, you know, if you're really stuck, you can always call your brother dealer and say, hey, I've got this machine, <laughs> will this foot work? And they should be able to help you as well. And yes, oh. Susan, absolutely, you, I could have used the move it foot. Now I remember I was doing this on a machine that did not have move it foot capability and prior to this foot that same machine would not have had decorative stitch using a walking foot capability this this is a game changer for that because it does allow you to do some decorative stitching with the walking foot which is just what i prefer to do anytime i've got layers that um that are a little bit fluffy or that might shift so awesome all right, I'm back to your blog, and you give such great tutorials on what stitch you're using. Well, it's just really helpful because even if you see, if you just see a picture, if that doesn't match your machine, again, you can look up on your machine or look up even in your manual all the stitch listings in the pictures and say, "Well, mine looks like that. That must be it." And then <laughs> a lot of times they have names, and you could you could you know match up the name there. So 
The serpentine stitch. I think that's your absolute favorite. You, I love I mean, I know you some other favorites, but you always you use that on so many things, and it's so cool looking. I never called it that. I used to always call it the squiggly. So now I have to actually <laughs> make it's my terminology so, a little bit better because I Joanne love that you. stitch. I've used it in so many different ways. It's one of my favorite stitches to use with bobbin work. Believe it or not. Because it oh. just has that beautiful, like it just looks like you, you were able to hand embroider that beautiful curving lines. Um, somebody asked if they could make the bottom out of a different kind of fabric, like uh, like a, a mesh type thing for a. Um, I'm think I'm assuming for maybe like beach. Oh yeah, like a beach bag. Right the beach, yeah, you could definitely do that. The the neat thing is if if you follow those measurements. You could draw that on paper and then you could just simply draw lines and whack off that into sections however you like. If you want to make it a patchwork effect or you want to make the top with a band or you want to make the bottom with a different, you know, like I said, I think it's just a good kind of standard size for a tote bag. And you should be able to have a lot of fun with uh, making it your own. <laughs> I'm with you, Arnell. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's bring this back up. All right, so you marked it, and then you just chose a bunch of different stitches to use. Is that mm -hmm. what you did? I, I did. I used the um, serpentine, and I used the uh, the star stitch. I call it the star stitch. I don't know. That one probably has a, has a real name to it. I don't know what it, what it is. It's actually an entredeau stitch, believe it or not, which is in the whole realm of heirloom sewing, but it makes a beautiful decorative stitch because it just it's one of those stitches that stitches twice on each line that it sews, so it builds up that nice little bit of um, texture and depth and it it uh it's just it's just a it's one of my favorite stitches very cute and mickey is asking have you used cork for totes i actually i got on the cork bandwagon really late like after everybody else had done it and i have to say i've admired it in a lot of other people's projects but uh, my cork is still rolled up in a nice little nice little ball and stuck in my sewing room closet. So <laughs> I have not, but um, you just need to make sure it's flexible enough. Mm -hmm. And I guess I tend to really like, I kind of like the squishy effect of fabric because I, it's, you know, if you have a lot of totes, you got to store them like when you're not using them. And I like to just roll them up and, you know, fold them up, put them in a drawer or whatever. So absolutely. But that's a good idea. I've seen it done. The other thing, Joanne, is um, cork has been what I have preferred instead of using it as the whole bag. I've been just using it at the bottom because it just kind of made gave it a trendier, uh, kind of a trendy look. Uh, but again, what you just said, make sure it's a squishy cork. Otherwise, that thing is as stiff as a board. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, the other thing I, and in fact, now, now um, she's given me an idea because, you know, brother has a new line of gorgeous cork and mm -hmm. he cut. I know it cuts like butter on the scan and cut. Cindy Hogan's done that multiple times. And so I'm going to make, I'm going to use, I'm going to make mine into some appliques and trim a tote with some applique cork pieces. That's what I got in mind. Oh, that way I'll be, be able cool. to stretch it out too. Well, good. Hopefully that will be another tutorial that we do live here as well. That would be a good one. Wouldn't that be, that would be a good one. Definitely. All right. So let's see, what's the rest of those instructions. So there you see, I just, you know, went along, like I said, I used the, the quilt guide and the quilt guide, by the way, will slip right into the back of this foot. Right in the back, there's a hole there and the quilt guide, I didn't bring the quilt guide over, but it slides right there. And then you can literally slide it whatever distance you want from the needle. So if you want your decorative stitches to be an inch and a half apart, an inch apart, whatever you want, and you can just use that. Um, the walking foot, a regular walking foot has that too. And the uh, move it foot, the digital dual feed foot, has an extra accessory that you can buy that attaches to the foot and gives you that same capability. So I use those accessories a ton. I could not be without those guides because it just makes it so easy for you to follow line after line. I'm a big believer in marking your fabric as little as you possibly can. So instead of having to mark all those lines and stitch on all those lines, I just mark the first two that cross and then I can use my guide for the rest of them. Because I, I'm, I'm the kind of person that, you know, I'm a little leery of some of the markings that we have. I like to test it first. And in my case, most of the ones that I like to use need to be washed out before that item is pressed very much. So 
if I'm going to have to wash that out or at least, you know, get the markings out with, with a damp rag, I like to be able to do only a little bit of that and not have to wet the whole thing. So I'm, I'm totally with you on that, especially if it's a wax chalk. Yikes. Yes. <laughs> and Debbie, I don't know if the foot, um, it, yeah, the, the, the dynamic walking foot will fit the SE 1900. Yes, definitely. Definitely, because it's a it's a low shank foot, and then it'll fit the high shank when you use the adapter. So, works. You'll find that in the accessory catalog. It'll tell you exactly what it works for. Jane says, uh, "Cork would look great with your fabric choices." Definitely, definitely. That that's now I got a fun idea for that. So, you know, uh, Joanne, last time I was at the Houston Quilt Fest a few years back, uh, there was a booth that all they designed was cork bags. They were so expensive, but oh. they were so beautiful. And they were smaller bags, like smaller, some were flat, you know, easy to store. I almost purchased one and I thought, shame on you. <laughs> you could sew that in yeah, a second, but they okay. were so beautiful, the yeah. hardware that they used. So uh, we, might have have to a, have, we might have to work on something fun like that. I me. have a friend named Christiana. Sometimes she's here. I don't see if she's here today, but she makes gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous bags. And she has a, a she has a business out of it, and she sells them because they're they're beautiful. And she tends to make a little bit of the smaller type wallet things or crossbody bags and things like that. But that's fun. Oh, Lynn is so funny. How do you girls get anything done? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I have a really big UFO pile, Lynn. I don't know about you, Joanne, but mine's uh, pretty. Yep. In fact, I'm going through my UFOs. If you've read my, uh, some of you might have read my recent posting. I'm kind of going on this like tangent where I'm trying to encourage everybody to to uh, live your best sewing life now. And if that was in your past and you don't want to finish it, don't finish it. Get rid of it. Donate <laughs> it or whatever. But don't put that burden on yourself because sewing should be fun. It should, oh, be, it should be something. I have a few of those, Joanne. So I give you the permission to get rid of the guilt. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> okay, so I love how you measured this and I love how you lined up. So now everyone can kind of see how you had lined up those stitches. It look they're perfectly centered on your bag. Uh, they look great. I suppose if somebody was like a newbie at sewing, they could even cut a wider piece if they wanted to test it, you know, in case they made mistakes. But that is that's perfectly a good idea. Awesome. Yeah. Yep, that's a good idea. That would that would work too. Yep. You know, that stitch, that serpentine stitch, I just I'm looking at it really close. That actually makes it look like texture on the fabric. You can't it, even tell it's a stitch. It creates the most beautiful uh, motif, actually, when they when it crosses over itself. It just, yeah. it's really just very special. Who would think that just some windy stitch would end up being that that pretty, <laughs> but it is. My squiggly. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a good stitch for sewing trims down, by the way, because it goes from side to side. So if your trim is a little wider, it'll anchor it down. And it's okay. a very forgiving stitch because if you're straight stitching some some trim, you have to be right on target. This kind of lets you just kind of catch it a little bit. So yeah, so Teresa said true. it looks like part of the fabric. It does. It does. It really so then does. I had, I, I, I had a pretty shell button and I picked that for the, um, for the button. Now I could have probably found something maybe orange or pink or something like that, but you know, I had that one in my stash and I, I love shell buttons. I have a big batch of them. I, whenever I can use them, I do because they're, they, they have that kind of coloration where they pick up whatever other color is around them. Um, abalone, I think is what they actually are. Now, when you have buttons like that, do you have any, well, you're not going to really wash the tote bag, but like when I put those on garments or something delicate, I, I've had to quite often either hand wash it or put on a delicate cycle in a bag because one time I had these all over my jacket. It was, I actually used those as trim and about five of them broke. Now five, wow. that's not too many, but when you have them all over the jacket, but I had to redo all of those. And I was like, oh, that isn't going to work. And it did not work in the dry cleaners either. So oh. I had to be really careful. That's interesting because I use, I have a lot of shell buttons on a lot of my, my garments and I wash all of them, but I always turn them inside out. And oh, I well, haven't had work. a problem, but I might have just been, I just might have been, you know, kind of hit it lucky. So, well, I did not have mine inside out and I didn't yeah. have it in a laundry bag. So it probably was thrown in with something like Wynn's jeans or something. <laughs> laundry bags are great. Laundry bags are really good. Really oh, good ideas. 
So this is so I use the, but, the button sewing foot that actually comes with that uh, machine to sew the button on. And Could I think you explain the, those two but those two dots you got here, those little blue yeah. dots? Um, I just you know what I did? I put the button down and and marked those two dots so that that would give me the um, place to line that up. Perfect. And For then you're going to see wondering like why is there two dots? Are yeah. those your buttonholes or is that your foot? <laughs> That's just my placement marks basically. But you're going to see I think in the next picture. Um, another tip that I like to do. Yep, there it is. Okay. This might sound a little crazy. You can use one of two things, either like a wooden toothpick or the, the head of the, the actual head part that goes into your machine of a sewing needle. A wooden toothpick is a little bit safer, but with this type of button sewing foot, we don't have the opportunity to create like a shank underneath. If you have the other type of buttonhole foot that comes like with the Luminaire and some of the other machines, you have a little sliding bar. And when you slide that bar uh, over the, the button, it, it, it gives a little bit more space so that you have a little bit more room to button and unbutton the button, if that makes sense. So that you don't sense. have that with this type of foot. So what I like to do is insert that needle or like I said, a wooden toothpick and stitch over that so it just raises that up a little bit and makes a little bit of space so your button is on if you were hand sewing it you would have sewn it on a little bit looser so that when you button and unbutton the item it will uh, button and unbutton easily I, it drives me crazy when i buy a ready-made it's typical very common like in jean jackets mm -hmm. where the buttonhole could have been about another quarter of an inch bigger and you're trying to get, you're struggling to get that button. You know, there's nothing worse than a buttonhole that's too small or too big. But you gotta have one just right. So true. All right, so, this is looking fabulous. The colors that you brought in with this strap is perfect. That's fun. It's fun fabric. So that just makes an easy way to position it. I try to, you know, when I'm going through these projects and I'm creating them because they're just like they come out of here. You know, they're they're like they just. Where they all come from, I don't know. When I first started doing this, many, many, many years ago, I can remember I finished a big project. It was a whole uh, collection of samples for Brother. And it was one of my earlier ones that I had done. And I remember finishing it, sending it off. It was going to be you know, displayed in a show. I'd love to know if you get this thought too. And I went to sleep that night and I thought, I don't think I'll ever come up with another good idea after all that. <laughs> and whatever they come so but when i when i put these together i try to make it so that everything that you're doing kind of goes easy so if the pocket's a certain size then the straps can go right next to it i try to make it as non-complicated and as streamlined as can be so that when you sit down to actually sew the project you can get it done 10 times quicker than i got it done because i was stopping to think about everything and i was taking pictures at every every step uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. And I'm totally with you, by the way, Joanne. I actually will spend, if I know if I have a project coming up, I will, even if it's a new pattern, I will probably spend, well, depending on how much time, maybe a week, maybe a month. It depends how complicated the project, working it out in my head first. And I cannot move on until I've got all those steps. And then I go do it. And I still change a few things, but I got to have it all figured out before I can even start. <laughs> I know. Sometimes, do you have that though, where sometimes you think like, I can't, I'll never get another idea. And then 20 of them start like flowing <laughs> out. You don't even know where they came from. <laughs> that is so true. So true. Okay. So, and the flap on the back piece. To Teresa, the um, no, but that would have been a great idea. That would have been a great idea. And when I show you the toten in just a minute, um, we can we can talk about that. That would have been that would have worked, and then that would have closed the. Um, I love the idea. That would have actually closed up the bag at the same time that it that it buttoned. So yeah, that would have. So good there, idea. I'm just showing you the lining, and um, because we're amongst friends, I'm gonna share a little a little unknown secret with you. I didn't put this in the instructions, so you you're. I'm only telling my friends this here. Um, the reason that I use that orange inside for the lining is because I didn't have enough fabric for the tan. I was going to just self line it because I thought that would make it really easy. And yeah. then I thought, uh oh, that's not going to work. So then I found the orange fabric and the orange picked up the orange in this. And I thought, all right, we'll make this, you know, we'll make lemonade out of the lemons and we'll say it's a great project to use for uh, mixing and matching fabrics that you have laying around. So that's it. Hey, that's okay, Joanne. It's okay because now everyone that maybe only bought a yard and a half and is like, oh, I should have bought three yards. Well, now they'll know what to do with the little extra fabric. 
<laughs> split it up. You know, actually, I actually do that in my garments as well. If I only have enough beautiful lining where my jacket opens, I might use it there and at the bottom part of my cuff. And then from here, like here up, I'll use something totally different. Nobody sees that, right? Yeah, Unless you absolutely. And, and it's a design feature. Nobody knows that you didn't. Exactly. Design detail. That's what Teresa said. Design detail. <laughs> Nobody yep. knows she didn't plan it that way, except you all know now because I spilled the beans. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me bring this back up. You're boxing the bottom. Yep. That's that's just the kind of typical way to do it. And that other thing I like to do, and I think I have it in instructions, it, when I box the lining and I box the actual tote, I like to flip the seam allowances so that when they are on top of one another, one's going one direction and one's going the other direction. So they're not laying flat on top of each other. So just do a little flip there. I agree, Arnell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip though, because you have a thick, you have a thick um, seam allowance right there. Yep, so if you do exactly. both way, then it'll lay nice, nice and flat. Makes it flat. There's the lining. Just leave a little opening there and you're ready to pull it. That's the messy part. That's the ugly picture before it turns beautiful. <laughs> I think they call that birthing the bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's so funny. And y'all, you're doing some top stitching. Just that final little top stitch just helps keep everything in place. Because I don't know about you, but it drives me crazy when I have anything that's lined and the lining creeps out to the outside. So anything oh, yeah. you can do to keep that contained, that, that will work. That machine is so cute. It is. It's a sweetheart machine. It's it's a, you know, if you already have a big machine, you know, like your Luminaire or something like that, and you want a machine that you could take to classes, I highly recommend this. Or you're going, you're doing retreats, or you're going on the boat, or you're going on your camper, because you're going to find a lot of the same features, mm -hmm. you know, your scissors, your speed control, your, your edit screen, um, are built right into this machine and it's it's just you get a lot of affordable um you know machine with high-end type features mixed into it so so there's the stitches that are uh, recommended with this foot now it doesn't mean you can't try other ones but you do want to test those out and you want to kind of stick to stitches that are similar to those because even though this foot is designed to take that backward and forward motion, you're still working with a walking foot, not a flat, smooth, wide decorative stitch foot. So there are, you know, some things you want to um, make sure that you test out before you um, sew a whole bag's worth. Good idea. So let me bring those stitches back up right here. There you go. And those are in the instructions. So, you know, they when they when they design a foot and they write the instructions, they do it so that those of us that use it can learn from it. And I know a lot of times we skip that part, but um, I like to highlight those instructions too. All right. So that just shows the, you know, that I use the foot and the, and the guide there. So you get an idea what the picture is, so. That's awesome. Now you have the bag right there, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. Let me bring this back up here. There's the bag on the fence. Cute photo. Yep, and there's the yard. real bag. <laughs> there it is. Let me bring it. It's got a little dark, but you can see the detail really, really well in there. Focus for a second. Come on, focus. <laughs> there we go. And then, you know, just that's the backside. But what I think it was Teresa was saying is if this flap, let me unbutton it real quick. If I would have sewn this flap on this side of the tote, then when it wrapped over, it would not only, you know, close the pocket, it would close the top of the tote as well, right where my fist is there. So that's a terrific idea. That would be a good plan B. <laughs> that would be, that'll be tote number 4045. <laughs> exactly. So like I said, though, the size is good. The size is just a really nice, not too big, not too small. Like Goldilocks porridge, it's just right. It's really cute. A lot of fun. I think I might have to add that to my list. I think that is, I mean, I love the size of it. I, I love the design. I'm doing, I'm having a couple girls over, younger girls to sew. This might be a great beginner project for them. Oh, it would be very, very easy. I put intermediate in the instructions. You know, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the, um, the brother blog now 
is categorized with every project as either beginner, intermediate, I think advanced. I think that's only three categories. So mm, we need to do that because that helps people when at first glance at it. But right. if, you, if you're really a beginner, I would say don't be afraid to try an intermediate. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you're an intermediate, don't don't shy away from the beginner thinking they're they're too simple. You know, they're all good, but you need some type of a range to kind of give you a little bit of an idea. And because this had embroidery on it, you know, yeah. and you're doing it on a piece that you're having to use the certain, you know, sticky stabilizer and all that, I wouldn't call it like, you know, first time out of the box type project. No. And, you know, that's the thing is if. It, it's a great project to move up because you can learn how to do the pocket. If you get frustrated, you can't figure the pocket off, leave the pocket off. <laughs> I mean, those, and that's a bag number 46. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Joanne, I have this really cute picture. And actually, I, I apologize, all of you. I always try to put descriptions so you know what you're looking for. And I didn't even mention the tote bag. All I mentioned was babies. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We changed things a little bit. So everybody forgive us if we're not doing as much baby as we said we were going to. Um, the I thought there would be a few more projects posted on the Brother blog already that were baby projects. And they're still coming. So we'll give you a little... We'll, I'll still show can you some baby little, things, Can I give them a sneak peek absolutely. at what's coming? Yep, absolutely. This will definitely have to be something we include next month during our live, for sure. All right, hold on one second. It just takes a second to get up there. A lot of cute things coming up. And I will tell you that I've also got some projects coming this month that will coordinate with that tote bag. Some, what Ooh. I call summer fun projects. And I'll give you a little, a little sneak peek at one of them is going to have one of these on there. Oh, and wait, let me bring this up. Hold it's on, so me... cute. Angela, you're going to want it. I know you're going to want it when you I see mean, it. Oh, oh, that. So I, I won't tell you lot. what I did, but I made a freestanding applique with uh, Scan and Cut and Simply Applique software. So there is a tutorial on how to combine your Scan and Cut and your simply applique software to make this freestanding flower. And then I show uh, in another post in July, a project where you use one, a couple of these. Uh, okay, so I could think of so many places I would use that. You knew I would love that. <laughs> That's a little tease for you. And this is a, a you've already seen the bib has already been posted, but the uh, burp cloth and the baby shirt are coming soon. Oh. I have no idea what just happened there. Sorry, I think I just got to scroll up some of my photos <laughs> from my YouTube videos. How do you like that? This is show and tell day. Okay, so this is so adorable. Let me see if I can make this just a little bigger. Okay, that's so cute, Joanne. You know, the baby things are, they really are just so much fun to make. And I, I talked about this recently with somebody and somebody wrote and said, well, they don't, they don't have any babies to sew for. And I don't actually either, but I, you know, I still keep coming up with these baby things. But if you don't, you might want to consider finding, you know, are there some, some, uh, some charities in your area that are always looking for baby items because they really are fun to make. They're easy to make. They're very forgiving and they're very inexpensive. I mean, you could buy a whole bag of those, uh, you know, bibs, you can buy a whole, you know, whole stack package of them, the, the diaper, uh, Cloth diapers is what I use to, to make the burp cloth. And then the baby onesies, you can buy packages of those and decorate them with some cute designs and have a little bit of fun with it and then donate it to a place that, you know, has need for, for that to give to mothers that, you know, don't have the opportunity to go out and buy all those cute things. So that's a great idea. Yeah. And there are quite a few places. Women's shelters. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there's something in your local area. All you have to do is ask around, ask your family and friends if they know anybody that needs something. And, you know, maybe you can find somebody you can build a basket with and put some really cute things in there. Adorable. So this is what we have coming down the line. So we might have to add this to August. We already, we might have to switch. I don't and add know where they're going to come up, but they'll be there somewhere. <laughs> I know that they'll be there somewhere. And so we posted and I'll post it down here one more time. And also it was the holidays this weekend. So a lot of things probably are a little bit delayed. So look below and that is the Brother Sews. If you go to Brother Sews, that's also where you can get your manuals that Joanne mentioned. If you have an older machine or a machine, you can't find your manual. If you're looking for any of these extra accessories, 
you're trying to find a local brother dealer, <laughs> all of those things. But if you scroll down to the bottom, there's the crafting and the sewing blog. Now they're both different. So next week, May is going to be on. I've already seen her project. We had to pre-record it because I'm not going to be in town next week, but her project's so cute, but hers is on the crafting blog. So remember, there's two blogs to get all of your things. And Joanne, uh, you even mentioned that some of the past embroidery designs of the month, some of them, they can still go back and watch all of them. Even if yes. they can't get the design, they can still do the project. Mm -hmm. Yep, you should find a lot of those in the in the search. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be highlighting some of those. Um, if, if anybody follows my newsletter and follows me, you know, where I send them, uh, send email out on the weekend, a lot of times I will compile a post or an email newsletter and I will I will pull up past projects that all fit within to a certain theme and I will give you the direct link to the brother project so you don't have to hunt for it. So that always works. In fact, I got a couple, a couple little things I'll show you. These are actually from the, the brother sponsored It's So Easy TV show. And these you can find on my YouTube channel, the, uh, the, the video tutorials from that. This is just a really quick, easy, cute little baby bottle cover. And then uh, this um, mitered satin binding blanket. This was another project that I did for the brother sponsored It's So Easy TV show. I show you how to miter all four corners so they all look perfect and beautiful. And this is just that ready-made binding that you buy. You buy some fleece or some of that cuddly fabric and finish the edges and you have a fabulous blanket if you want to go one more step, you can embroider baby's name in the corner. You can have a lot of fun with that. Oh, that's cute. And so you if they go to your website down below, they can click to your YouTube channel, correct? Correct. Awesome. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can just find, if you Google, uh, if you um, just type in my name on YouTube, you'll find my, you'll find my uh, YouTube channel too. That's fantastic. And funny you said it's so easy because this week, Joanne, I finally, I was kind of saving these, these projects for season 2100 that we finished just, you know, a little while back. And I'm doing the same thing on my YouTube channel every day at noon. I'm showing one of the episodes and I'm having like a really fun giveaway with some embroidery and I'm doing the Bella, which I'm not wearing today. It was too hot. <laughs> wow. I saw but that. So That's wonderful. You and I both have on that show. And so don't forget you, you have all of yours on your YouTube channel. Correct. And I do as well. So you well, can it's, go a great, it's a great resource for, you know, I mean, there's obviously there's other instructors too that you could find that were on it so easy. Uh, Emily's done uh, shows. Uh, Cindy Hogan's done shows. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Kemp Brent's done shows. I mean, there's just a tremendous resource there of different ideas and, and different techniques. And you'll see a lot of different brother machines used on all those different shows because we've, you know, used different ones through the years. So I want to just address, because somebody had asked me at the beginning, I can't remember who it was, I'm sorry, but uh, asked me what machines I use. And I do have a Luminaire, so I use that regularly. Um, I like to alternate between the Luminaire and the um, NS1750D. They're really at opposite kind of ends of the spectrum, but trust me, they share a lot of commonalities if you sew on both of them, because there are some edit capabilities built into that little machine that are you know similar to what you find on the big machine. Um, so those are two of my primary machines. I do have a six needle uh, that I've had for a long time. And I use that when I have something I want to get done a little bit quicker or I've got a lot of different um, thread color changes. But those are pretty much my go-to my go -to machines. So Those are all good machines. And yes, I saw that question. I forgot who had asked it, though. So uh, Susan might have rolled in a little bit late. So just a reminder, you find the free design of the month if you go to Brother Sews. See the website down below. And scroll down to the bottom of the page and go to their blog. And you'll find that it's actually the first thing on their blog right now, at least as of today. <laughs> and yes. also, other sews always love to see what you're working on. I put their Instagram up above. Be sure to tag them because a lot of times they share what you're working on. Show them how cute your brother machine looks on your table and maybe you'll be featured. You just never know. <laughs> share your ideas just like you're sharing here. This I think this is one of the great things about our get-togethers when we have these get-togethers. I mean, yeah, you've... You've got great things to show and tell. I've, you know, got a few things to talk about, but all the tips and sharing that goes on in the chat is um, is a lot of a lot of a lot of fun and very fulfilling to see how how people help each other and have different ideas too. 
Oh, yes. Oh, Melissa, that's funny you say that because so many people after they get the luminaire, they're like, all I do is embroider on it. I never even get a chance to sew on it because it does so much. The 10 needle is amazing. <laughs> Are you going to tell us a little bit about that beautiful green jacket I see right behind you? <laughs> well, Julian, that was my sew along from the last little while, my Chloe trench, and I finished it and I actually wore it last week. But OK, since we're amongst friends, I'll be honest. I couldn't find the little uh, clips that I wanted to match. All I could find was silver. And I really thought, let me ask your opinion. Would you do gold or would you do silver with this? Hmm. I would do whatever color jewelry I think I wore most. Yeah. So, and I wear both. Okay. But this has kind of a yellow. Oh, it looks, <laughs> actually doesn't look bad with this. But I made it's it out of beautiful. a pine and it is so comfortable. Oh, it's such a pretty so color. So now I just need to find something for the straps. But this weekend I actually wore it and I just tucked them. <laughs> I tucked the raw edge in. I figure nobody will ever notice. <laughs> I think either color would work. But in my opinion, my humble opinion, I think gold would dress it up a little bit. Silver mm -hmm. would make it a little more casual. So however you want to play it. Yeah. I don't know. I will have to do a vote. Tomorrow I'm going to show everyone that has actually made this jacket. And it's so comfortable. I didn't line it. It would have been a lot faster if I didn't do it so long. But now I think I'm going to have to make another one, Joanne. I'm so glad you noticed it. Thank you, by the way. It's well, that's on my wish list. list. I love that jacket. I really love that jacket. It's so classic. And it, it, it looks good on everybody. Every silhouette would look beautiful wearing that trench coat. That well, and you just coat. showed your extra fabric you bought. You know, you had found that stash. I, f I had some extra that I found in my stash. It was just enough to do the belt and the seams. That's it. I mean, like, I don't even have that much extra fabric yep, for it. Yep, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so someone asked us, Joanne, that when do we have time to sew? Well, I think that's why we do our sew-alongs and we do all of our it's so easy episodes so we can sew for ourselves a little bit, right? That is true. Having a deadline makes you do it, no matter what. I mean, we all know that from, you know, you're, whether you've got a wedding coming up or a baby shower or somebody's birthday or some type of dinner party or holiday. A deadline makes you do it. <laughs> yes. Everybody's saying silver or gold. I just can't make up my mind. I'll figure it out by tomorrow. But uh, speaking of deadlines, both my sisters had birthdays last month, and their gifts are right over here, and they are waiting to be embroidered. So speaking of using that six needle to embroider faster, that's on my list this afternoon with a couple hats as well. Very good. Joanne, this has been so informational. All of you that join us, we just thank you so much for taking time out of your day. We know summer is busy and a lot of you are at the beach, but I know some of you are actually watching us while you're at the beach, which is even better. We love having you wherever you are. Everybody's saying hello, hello. Okay, Joanne, I can hardly wait to see these projects. I'm going to bring these up one more time just for a quick peek. This is what you are going to see on the blog here shortly. Lots of good stuff coming on the blog, for sure. Like I said, I've got some summer fun projects that will coordinate with the tote. We've got some of those baby projects and um, some, you know, some some special feature or tutorial or special idea in mixed in with almost all of those so that you, you, you know, I want it to be a, a great project, but I want it to be a learning lesson, too. Awesome. And, you know, if you ever have something that you would like us to show or feature or teach, be sure to leave a comment or send a note to brother or send a note to one of us because we always love to share. And Joanne has Absolutely. a fabulous newsletter that comes out every Sunday morning. Well, Sunday morning for me because I'm asleep when it comes out on Saturday night. <laughs> That's usually when it comes. <laughs> always informational. So thank you all for watching. Joanne, it is fabulous to see you. I don't think I'm going to be wearing this today. It's 80 degrees. But uh, your tote bag, I think, would look fabulous with it. It I might sure looks pretty. A tote bag to coordinate with that would be the crowning touch. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait till next month to see what you're working on. In the meantime, I'm going to catch you over on YouTube. And I always see you on Saturdays for It's So Easy. What do we, what do we call those even? Our, like just, our, um, yeah, our Saturday, Saturday with It's So Easy Day. <laughs> our little, yes. little mini, mini show there. Oh, Dalia won your book. Oh, wonderful. Hope she got it by now. And we had a giveaway um, recently. So very good. Excellent. Your, your book is fabulous. A lot, of, a lot of good things to make. So hopefully you get so, get inspired. All right, everyone. Thank you so much, Joanne. Thank you for a wonderful Thank tutorial. You. It's always a great pleasure. You have a great day. Happy and sewing. And brother sewing fans, thank you for watching, and we will see you soon. Bye.